My guest today is Mark Rendell. Mark, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's good to have you back. It's been like three years since yes. you were on my show. Yeah, a long last. time. Long time. <laughs> What's, uh, what do you do? Um, so at the moment, I've been working on my startup, uh, Zudio, which uh, was a tool for managing uh, Azure cloud storage, blobs, tables, queues, that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm currently working 16-hour days um, <coughs> we are we're pivoting it's becoming something else and we're going to be announcing that in in july or august oh, and, and launching something happens. new so yes i will be looking for every opportunity to to talk about that so uh, <laughs> uh today we're talking about because uh, we're at dev summit you did a talk yesterday on c sharp six yes which yeah. i missed i'm sorry i was, That's okay. I was taking a nap because i flew from america That's, so were some of the people <laughs> in the room actually so really yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. so i feel solidarity with those guys <laughs> uh what's uh, c sharp six is um it's uh is a What's the schedule for that? Uh, so it's because it's, it's Microsoft's new everything's open source, everything's on GitHub, mm -hmm. and so it's it's a weird schedule. So it's it's release candidate, I think, officially at the moment. Okay. Uh, so they've got it in the Visual Studio 2015 release candidate. If has you've downloaded and installed that, you have C sharp. Then 6. you have C sharp six, the release candidate. So they're working on stability and bug fixing. There's no new features at this point. Um, okay. But you can also clone the entire thing from GitHub and, and download it and build it yourself and, and, and create your own like C-sharp compiler. Older versions of Visual Studio. Uh, then they did have it working in Visual Studio 2013, and I'm not sure if they're still uh, supporting that or, or mm, if there's okay. going to be a service pack. Obviously, what they want everyone to do is update to 2015 right. anyway. So, right. so that's their focus. What's going on in C-sharp? What's the cool um, new stuff? Well, so the biggest thing is Roslyn, uh, which is they've rewritten the C Sharp compiler. So up until now, the C Sharp compiler was actually written in C and C++. Mm -hmm. um, and now the C Sharp compiler is written in C Sharp. Okay. Um, and the VB compiler is written in VB, which must have been fun. But yeah. <laughs> um, they so say that's the, that's the mark of a good compiler is to write yourself. Yes. I mean, most compilers don't call themselves 1.0. Well, most languages <coughs> don't call themselves 1.0 until they get to the point where uh, they call it self-hosted, mm. where the compiler is written in its own language. Mm. Um, but it's taken C Sharp 6 goes <laughs> to get there. Well, I mean, um, so uh, just as an academic exercise, that's interesting. Mm. But it's more than that, right, with Roslyn. Roslyn is actually... So uh, there's a lot of stuff... We, from the outside, can use. Yes, yeah. So Roslyn, it's not just the compiler. It's got language services, and all of these are exposed as as APIs from the Roslyn assembly so that you can reference the Roslyn assemblies from your own uh, .NET applications mm. and hook into it. You can write uh, syntax analyzers. Mm. Um, you can write sort of things like FXCOP and StyleCOP have become really easy to write. There's refactoring uh, facilities in there and so forth. Hmm. And also, the way they've written the code, the, the modular approach they've taken, now C-sharp developers who might have had a hard time reading C++ code can actually read the code in their own compiler and see how it works ah. and maybe contribute changes. Or um, if you wanted to, uh, you can create slight variants on C-sharp and add in your own language features and uh, and distribute that if you want to or or use it internally if you want to interesting um, it's interesting also how many people actually do that yeah it sounds yeah hard um the other thing they've done is they've made it uh, a lot more performant and it's it's much better at making use of multiple uh, processes so mm. it'll parallel compile a whole bunch of stuff and we've got a whole load of immutable collections that have actually been added to .NET um, specifically so the Roslyn team wanted things like read-only dictionaries or immutable dictionaries, immutable uh, lists and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so if you add something to a list, it returns a new list with okay. that thing on it, So, which is obviously very useful in a, a function, parallel yeah, compiler yeah. pipeline thing. Mm. So that's that's been the big um, focus uh, for the last uh, couple of years mm -hmm. um, since, since C-sharp 5. I, I'm um, curious, are you planning to use Roslyn's compiler as a service feature in any of your applications? Um, I have, uh, so Simple Data, I've just uh, started Simple That's Data your, uh, too, which is the thing, the micro RM that we talked about last time. And one of the issues with Simple Data is that uses uh, dynamic uh, types to, so you have a dynamic database object, and then if you say dot customers, it goes off and finds out if you've got a customers table mm. um, and so forth. And 
uh, it's great. It's really quick to throw together an application and you don't have to keep regenerating classes and so forth. But you do lose the IntelliSense. Mm -hmm. And Roslyn right. actually has the IntelliSense, the, the code completion uh, facility inside Roslyn. Mm -hmm. And looking at the code, there are places where uh, it's possible to hook in. So um, you can say, I want to join in providing IntelliSense for C Sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than I will take over. So at the moment, things like ReSharp replace it entirely. Right, they basically okay. write their own They compiler. write their own they compiler, and, it, right? and they completely take over all the IntelliSense for C Sharp. Mm. Uh, Roslyn allows you to contribute to the IntelliSense for, t for C Sharp. Ah. And so I actually, I've got a spike where um, I can look at your DB object, and if you put a comment on the line above where you open the database connection and mm -hmm. put a connection string in there, I can actually connect to the database and give you IntelliSense from the database ah. uh, live in Visual Studio while you're writing the code. And so ah. that's something that I want to do. So the comment is a hint to Roslyn to, to tell it yeah. where to find So Roslyn can string. see the comment above the line where you said var db equals database.open. Mm. And then I can take that comment, connect to that database if it's available. Mm. And then in the IntelliSense, if you type db dot, you'll see kind of customers, users, orders, and, cool. and all this sort that's of stuff. An so of so simple that's simple data. Um, simple data, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Wrong. Simple DB is Amazon's old <laughs> uh, storage thing. Simple uh, data. So I'll simple, simple data uh, 2.0 uh, will have that facility um, either at the same time as 2.0 is released or, or shortly afterwards. Uh, it kind of depends when Roslyn, uh, when the Roslyn team take the internal keyword off some things. Really, there's a lot of internals in in there at the I moment. I don't know why people like the internal keyword. That's, it's that's a debate people have. They're not internal. happy. They're not comfortable committing to the API at the moment. That's that's the issue. Uh, um, I guess for beta software that so makes sense. Yes, it's release candidate now. You know, <laughs> um, so there's a lot of stuff in there. But mm. so yes, I, I will be uh, playing with Roslyn for for simple data. So um, so that's by far the biggest feature in C sharp six, right? Yeah, the rest is yeah. just a bunch of little conveniences. Yes, right? yes, syntactic sugar. Okay. Um, is, is what I call it, and uh, and when it was all theoretical and they were talking about it, I, I was looking at these things and going, well, that's um, so the biggest kind of obvious that sounds awesome is what they're calling the null conditional operator. Hmm. Um, so uh, not everyone knows that there's a, a thing called the null coalescing operator, which has been in C sharp since the start, okay. where you can put question mark question mark, okay. and it's like a or, um, and you can say, okay, so if the first half of the expression is null, then use the second half. Right. Um, so <coughs> if is null. Yeah. So, you then, know, use this, use but this. if it's null, then use this instead. Right. Um, and we've now got the null conditional operator, which is actually, uh, you use this on objects. Um, okay. And you say question mark dot instead of just dot. Okay. Okay. So if you've got like a, a string mm -hmm. and you say dot length, but the string object is null, you'll get a null reference exception. Right. Okay. Um, if you say, if you've got a string uh, variable and you say question mark, question mark dot length, okay. then it will always work. And what you'll get back is rather than an int, you'll get a nullable int. Ah. And if the string was null, it'll, just be, it'll null. be a null. Okay. But if it had something in it, then it'll have the length in it. Okay, I think um, I see this. So this is so all, uh, I've written a lot of defensive code around this. Yeah, just so today. all those places where you said if it doesn't equal null, and if this doesn't equal null, and if this doesn't equal null, right. you if can you now a, replace with... If you have a chain of, uh, you know, yeah. object dot object yeah. dot object, yeah. object, yeah. object yeah. it becomes really problematic. Um, yes, and so there's, uh, there's two places where this really uh, sings. One is those places where you say uh, var... Um, manager equals employee as manager, and then if manager does not equal null. So now you can just say uh, parens um, employee as manager, close parens, question mark, dot. And mm. so that works nicely. Right. But absolutely the biggest one is event handlers. So if, if you're writing your event handler code right, mm. you say var handler equals event. Mm. If handler does not equal null, then invoke the handler right. to stop Null reference exceptions happening on that, and that has now become uh, event question mark dot invoke this event args. Mm. It's, so that's gone down to one line. So that's really nice, and that is thread safe and, and everything else. Mm. Okay. So that's that's the the biggest obvious change. One the my second favorite, I think, uh, from from C sharp six is the string interpolation, mm. and that's what's that? 
So this is something that dynamic languages like Ruby and Python and uh, and so on have had for for a very long time, where inside a string, uh, you can put uh, curly braces usually, um, and then within the curly braces, you can reference variables and and members and so forth, um, and then the the runtime uh, turns that into. Uh, the value of that property. So you can okay, say, right. hello, curly brace, Zero. username, close curly brace, oh. and it'll say, hello, David. Okay. okay. Um, I, I guess I, it's the same as curly brace zero, curly brace one. So it's very much like curly brace zero, curly brace one. And actually, if you do this, so in C sharp six, you start a string with dollar to turn on string interpolation. Okay. So it, similar to when you would have started a string with the at sign for a, to include new lines and so on. Okay. But we start it with dollar. And then you can put in any expression, um, any oh, sort I of see. single right. expression. So we used to have uh, the, the bracket zero, or curly brace zero, curly brace one, and then we'd have at the end. At the end, you would say comma this, comma that, comma the other, the and so it would one. replace the zero. And so for this, and string interpolation is just syntactic sugar for that. So actually, ah, okay. what the compiler does is it turns it into string dot format, and then zeros and ones and twos and ah, threes. Okay. So I like that. At runtime, it's, ex to, it's doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, here. but it's it's great. It's it's shorter. You haven't got this kind of um, superfluous function call. And also, if you want to introduce a new variable into that string, mm -hmm. you don't have to kind of work out where in the right. argument list you want to put it at the end and so forth. So mm -hmm. yeah, so that's really nice. So that, um, that drove me to string concatenation a number of times. Yes. Yeah. Which has the nice and syntax this sugar, but there's an inefficiencies there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that um, that I think is uh, we're going to have to be careful with education on is this is going to make it even easier for uh, for the less advanced developers to just drop the ID parameter from their controller action into select star from customer where ID equals oh, curly yeah. brace ID close curly brace and we're just going to be going oh god you've done it again <laughs> <laughs> we're empowering so, the bad yeah, developers yeah. Right, bad code. awesome <laughs> um, so those are the my, my two kind of favorites uh, oh, there's okay. a whole bunch of other stuff you've got uh, you can have read only properties now so read only automatic properties you can mm. specify a property that's just got a getter okay. an automatic property with just a getter and mm. then either set that uh, using an equals true afterwards or something, or you can set it from the constructor, okay. but that becomes read only. Mm. Um, oh, we've got exception filters. So now uh, when you are catching an exception, you can put a when after the catch section. Hmm. So say I'm catching an HTTP exception, I can put a when uh, ex.status code is greater than 499, okay. um, and then that catch block will only trigger when the HTTP status code is 500 or more. Um, oh, right. And so, and that's something that's actually been built into the CLR for ages, and Visual Basic.net has had this for a long time. I, I don't know when Visual Basic.net got it, uh, but C Sharp has not had this facility. Hmm. So this is actually doing something different in the CLR. Interesting. Um, so that makes your exception handling I actually remember better. I was in a, a session at the MVP Summit a couple of years ago, and they were debating whether it should be the word when or the word where. Yes. And that was a yeah. big deal. So they've gone with when. Well, they've gone with when for, <laughs> they've gone for with various when. reasons. But I just, uh, uh, I just, I was a kind of a, I don't think I'm revealing too much yeah. insider information, but um, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was just interesting that was that was important because once it's in the language, oh it's yeah, there yeah, forever. that's it. Yeah. It'll always be these when. are these are important decisions. Um, I mean, I remember the arguments over whether async and await should be particularly await. People weren't happy with because it made it sound like the program was going to stop, but. Um, all the people going, I don't like the word await. It sounds like you're going to suspend execution. Well, what do you think we should use? Um, and they couldn't think of any better. Yeah, that's, don't that's, know. that's the best yeah. Um, So, yeah, uh, so that's good. Oh, and we now, actually, speaking of exceptions and await, you can now await in a catch block, oh, wow. which you couldn't do in, oh, in C Sharp 5. Um, well, not if you're writing out to a log and you want to write out to the log asynchronously, ah, then okay. you can say, you know, await log.write async. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and and also in finally blocks, you couldn't mm. previously await in finally blocks. Mm. And so one of the things that they're talking about doing in C sharp seven is actually async disposables. So mm. quite a lot of the time with a managed with an unmanaged object, when you're closing it down, that's going to do some kind of asynchronous close the connection and let me know when it's closed oh, operation. So and so having an async disposable is okay. is a kind of a, that is actually a useful thing. Um, mm. So that's one of the things they're talking about for for C-sharp 7, uh, which is, you know, now that's their, their focus. They're kind of 
polishing and and finishing off C sharp six and, and on to the next thing. Yeah. And there's some great stuff coming there. Uh, is there um, anything you can share? Besides the, uh, um, the well, you can go to the go to their GitHub and look and and oh, that's right. everything it's everything in there is tagged with a, a C sharp seven milestone and, and ah. everything. So, but um, the the big things there is uh, pattern matching, uh, which is something that functional languages have F sharp has mm -hmm. match and then you have a series so it's a bit like a switch statement but okay. works differently uh, and you can also do it on types um, and also in the kind of F sharp uh, area um, they're looking at uh, records and algebraic data types unions and things like that mm -hmm. so the the F sharp guys are always going on about records are like uh, very simple lightweight objects that are implicitly read only hmm. Um, and yeah, better tuples. So tuple destructuring, which is where you can say instead of saying var tuple equals this, and then tuple dot item one and tuple dot item two, you can say uh, okay comma number equals try pass int, and mm. then it actually that's turns the tuple into, so that's yeah. into yeah. the yeah the yeah so it language. breaks breaks the tuple down into these values. So yeah, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff, and you can go and uh, and join in if you go to. Um, github.com slash dot net slash roslyn mm -hmm. r-o-s-l-y-n um, and yeah you can join in the discussion and uh, and if you really feel uh, productive then then fork it and, and contribute something to it um, and if you can't don't feel that you can contribute uh, um, actual compiler code then you can maybe contribute some some test code add some mm -hmm. test coverage there's, so, there's all sorts of things you can do yeah are you writing about this online somewhere? Um, I've been blogging about uh, ASP.NET vNext and and MVC six, and that's got some some C sharp six yeah. in there. Where Obviously, they're kind of tied together. So that's uh, my blog's blog.markrendel.net. Um, so yeah, you can uh, you can head over there. Um, yeah, I'm running ASP.NET in Docker on Linux and editing it in Sublime Text. And that is hardcore. Yes, it is hardcore. <laughs> um, but, you know, the fact that I can edit my C-sharp code in Sublime Text and I've got completions and I've got code checking is actually down to Roslyn. Yep. Um, there's a there's a standalone code intelli intelligence server called OmniSharp. Mm. Um, and OmniSharp uses the Roslyn compiler services mm. uh, to provide IntelliSense in Sublime Text and Atom, and it's actually what VS Code uses as well, the, the new cross-platform uh, Visual Studio editor. It's a brave new uh, world. It is, it is an insane brave new world, and, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you so much. No problem, thank you. Remember, friends don't let friends misuse technology.